Do you wanna learn how to smoke brisket? Then stick around because in this video, I'm gonna show you how to smoke brisket in a charcoal barbecue. All right, so we're gonna be working with a full brisket today. Now this one weighs about six and a half kilos and we're gonna get started by trimming it up. All right, so we'll start by flipping it over and we'll trim the underside first. You've always got a big pocket of fat here, so we'll work on taking that out. All right, so that's about as much as I'll take off there for now. So we'll spin it around. And now we wanna work on taking some of this hard fat off the bottom. You don't have to get all of it, the thin layers will render down. And because this end of the flat is very thin, I'm just gonna square it off through here. All right, now I'm pretty happy with how that underside's looking, so we'll flip it over and get started on the top. So you wanna make your brisket a nice uniform shape. So I'm just gonna trim this top flap off. The more evenly you trim your brisket, the more even it's gonna cook. Now I'm working on the point end here. Now there's so much intramuscular fat in there, you can afford to trim a lot of this top fat off. But on the flat side here, it's a little bit leaner. So you definitely wanna try and leave a nice even fat coverage on there. And you really wanna try and trim your brisket in a way that no juices will pull up anywhere on it. I know it's gonna be hard to avoid sometimes, but if you can, definitely try and trim it that way. And your brisket trimmings, don't throw them away if you've got anything around 80% lean meat and 20% fat. Keep it as it makes for the best burger patties if you've got a mincer. And any hard fat I like to keep, I'll put that in a pot later on, render it down and make some beef tallow. Now this side of the brisket is a lot thinner than the other, so I'm just gonna run my knife down this side and just square it off a little bit. All right, now I'm happy with both sides of this brisket. It's nice and uniform, so let's season it up. All right, so seasoning your brisket. Now, if you've got a favorite beef rub, go ahead and use that, or salt and pepper always does the trick. Some of the best briskets I've tasted is just a 50-50 mix of kosher salt and cracked black pepper, which is the base for what we're gonna be using today, but we've topped it up with some steak shooter and garlic goals. So that's what I've prepared here in this little shaker. So we'll get it mixed up and season this brisket. All right, so we'll flip our brisket over and season the bottom side first. I'll give it a light coat in mustard just to help bind our rubs. And then you wanna sprinkle from a height so you get a nice even coverage and give the bottom side of our brisket a nice generous coat. Don't forget the ends as well. Then we can flip it over and do the top. All right, so now our brisket is trimmed and seasoned, we can get started on setting up our barbecue. All right, so we're gonna be using the Oklahoma Joe's blackjack kettle. So we'll get started by opening it up and taking our cooking grate out. Then you wanna open up some briquettes. Now you can either rip the bag open or usually one side. You can just untie the string a few times. And then you should be able to just pull it and open it up like so. And we're gonna be using the snake method today. So with your briquettes, you want to just stack them up like so, in a domino fashion. Alright, so the bottom layer of our snake is done. Now, if you were using larger briquettes, you'd just run a single stack through the middle for our second layer. But because these briquettes are a little bit smaller, we're going to keep a double stack on top. All right, so our snake is pretty much done. As you can see, we've built it most of the way around our charcoal grate, but we've just left a gap here, and that's where our startup briquettes are gonna go. So in a charcoal chimney, you wanna get about 12 briquettes. Then we'll get a couple of fire lighters going. We'll get our briquettes on top, and we'll wait until they are nice, red hot, ashed over, and ready to go. So while your briquettes are coming along, use that time to get some other things ready you'll need for this cook. So we've got a foil tray ready, we've got some smoking wood ready. I'm gonna be using a combination of pecan and cherry, but if you've got another favorite smoking wood for beef, go ahead and use that. And we've also got our grill probe ready. Now this barbecue has a temperature gauge on the lid, but as usual, heat rises and you do normally get a slightly higher reading at lid level as opposed to grill level. So that's all we need to do now until these briquettes are ready. So we'll come back when they are ready. All right, so our briquettes are pretty much ready. So I'm gonna get this smoking wood on. So we'll lay down a piece of our pecan, a piece of our cherry, another piece of pecan, and we'll save our other piece of cherry to put on at the start of our snake where our startup briquettes are gonna go. And that's what you wanna see with your startup briquettes. You wanna see them nice, ashed over and red hot. So we'll dump those in at the start of our snake. And then you just wanna stack them up nicely at the start. 
Now you want to make sure they are all over the unlit stuff and then we can shut our lid and then we'll make sure our top and bottom vents are wide open. So I get questions all the time about the snake method and if it produces dirty smoke throughout the cook due to all the unlit briquettes that you use for the snake. Now the answer to that question is no, not when you set it up right. Because we're giving our barbecue five to 10 minutes to preheat, that's gonna preheat our briquettes to a hot enough temperature that they will catch light from our red hot ones without producing dirty smoke. It's the same concept as the minion method where you're using a bunch of unlit briquettes to fuel a really long, slow burning fire for a long smoke like this. As long as you use red hot briquettes to start your snake and you preheat your barbecue, everything around it will be preheated enough to catch light cleanly without producing dirty smoke. So I hope that answers that question, but if you do have any more questions, don't hesitate to ask them in the comments below. But for now, we'll be back once this barbecue's had five to 10 minutes to preheat. All right, so as you can see, nice clean burning smoke. Our barbecue's nice and preheated, so we'll open it up. And as you can see, our unlit briquettes are already starting to catch light from our startup briquettes. So we'll get our foil tray in, we'll get our piece of cherry on at the start, we'll get our cooking grate on, we'll get our brisket on. And you wanna make sure that your brisket is never over the burning part of the snake. So later in this cook, once our snake starts burning around here, we're just gonna rotate our brisket around away from it. And I've also positioned the thicker part of our brisket, which is the point end, closer to the snake, which is just gonna help it cook a little bit more evenly. And then we can hook up our grill probe. I'm just gonna clip it in up the back here, and then we can close our lid and let this brisket start smoking away. All right, now our brisket's on, we're just gonna get our barbecue to a nice smoking temperature. For this cook, I'm gonna to look to stabilize our barbecue off at around that 275 Fahrenheit or 135 Celsius range. And in this video, we're gonna be running through everything step by step. So the next thing you'll see is how I like to stabilize my temperatures off. So I'm gonna leave our top and bottom vents wide open until we get back up to around the 225 Fahrenheit or 110 Celsius at grill level. So we'll come back once we've hit that stage. So it's been about 15 minutes since we shut that bottom vent down to almost closed. It's sitting just a crack open at the moment. And again, our top vent is sitting wide open. Now I've been keeping an eye on our temperature at grill level and it's been sitting really stable for the last five minutes. So now's the time you wanna make any further adjustments if you need to increase temperature, open that bottom vent up slightly. If you need to decrease it, then shut it down a little bit. Now I will always try to stabilize off a little bit lower than where I want to be at as it's much easier to increase temperature than to decrease your temperature. It can be quite challenging bringing your temperatures back down if they have gotten away from you and for whatever reason if your temperatures have gotten away from you and you've closed that bottom vent down to pretty much shut don't be afraid to pour a little bit of water in that drip tray below your brisket that's going to absorb a lot of heat and really help to stabilize your temperatures off so for the first couple of hours of this cook this is where you really want to just keep an eye on your temperatures and find that sweet spot with your vent set up and that's going to really vary depending on what type of barbecue you're using how hot it is outside how windy it is what type of briquettes you're using and and much more. It's all about finding and understanding what works for you, making any adjustments needed and building off that. So we're gonna to continue to let our brisket smoke away and we'll keep checking in throughout this cook. All right, so it's been a couple of hours since we last checked in. So we're gonna have a look at our brisket. And as you can see where our snake's burning, it's getting close to being underneath that brisket. So we're just gonna rotate our cooking grate around. And now that's given us some good distance between the burning part of the snake and our brisket. And while we're here, I'm just gonna spritz our brisket with some water. That's just really gonna help with some moisture retention and bark formation. And you don't wanna leave your lid open for too long, so we'll close it back up and let it keep smoking away. All right, so our brisket's looking great. That bark's coming along nice and our temperatures have been holding beautifully. So all we're gonna do now is let this brisket go for about another hour. That's gonna take us to around the four hour mark into this cook. So the next time we check our brisket, we're gonna be checking the internal temperature and we'll potentially wrap it or boat it as well. So we'll be back once we've hit that stage. All right, so we've just ticked over the four hour mark into this cook. So let's have a good look at this brisket. All right, so our temperature's still holding nicely. So just be mindful whenever you've got your lid open, you are letting lots of oxygen in. So you might see a spike in temperature when you do close your lid again. But for now, let's have a look at these internals. So the two things I like to look for before I wrap or bow a brisket is being at an internal temperature of around 160 Fahrenheit or 71 degrees Celsius. We're a bit further behind in the point. So when we boat this, I'm gonna position the point a bit closer to the fire so it catches up. I'm happy with the bark. You should be able to touch around and it shouldn't be coming off on your finger. That's when you know your bark's set. And we're gonna boat this one, which is gonna really help preserve that bark too. So we'll get some air foil ready and then we'll boat it up. All right, so get two layers of good quality foil ready. Carefully get this brisket out. And while we're playing around with the brisket, we'll close our lid again. And now we just wanna fold the foil up around the brisket. And then I'm 
quickly going to get our foil tray out. And I'm going to use those beautiful drippings to go back into our brisket. So we'll pour them over. Get our tray back in. Get our cooking grate back on. And then our brisket. And like I said, that point end is now closer towards where that fire is burning. So that internal temperature is going to catch up to the flat side. Right, so now our brisket's back in, we just need to let that smoke away until we're ready to check for probe tenderness. And I'm gonna start doing that once we reach an internal temperature in both ends of around that 200 Fahrenheit or 93 degrees Celsius mark. Now it can be challenging to get both ends of your brisket to the same internal temperature. That's why it's always important to rotate whatever end is behind closer towards the fire where it's gonna be a little bit hotter. Now to get to that internal temperature where we're gonna start checking for probe tenderness might take us two hours to get there. It might take four, it might even take six. I don't like putting a time on these things that's why it's always better to get your brisket on earlier than what you think. That way if it is done a little bit earlier you can always rest it up until you're ready to serve it. We're just going to be patient if our brisket stalls we're just going to ride through it we're not going to panic we're not going to increase temperatures we're just going to simply let it go until it pushes through it. So be patient with your brisket we'll keep checking back in throughout this cook so we'll come back soon. All right, so it's been about three hours since we last checked in. So that means we're about seven hours total into this cook now. Our barbecue's been holding beautifully around that temperature we want it to be at. So let's have a look at this brisket. All right, so I haven't had to do too much. All I've been doing is rotating the brisket away from the hottest part of the snake. I've faced the point end towards the fire so it can catch up a little bit. We're about 180 internal in there. In our flat, we're about 185. So as you can see, the two ends are starting to cook nice and even. We've still got about two hours left on our snake, I reckon. So let's keep this lid closed and let this brisket keep going. So in them three hours that passed since we boated our brisket, we did hit a stall for about an hour of that time. We got stuck at about that 165 Fahrenheit internal mark. But like I mentioned earlier, we were just patient and it eventually pushed through it. So that brisket is looking absolutely fantastic. I'm really happy with it. All I'm going to do now is keep checking it every 45 minutes to an hour. I'll have a pro around I'll check my internals and if you wanted to put a probe in each end of the brisket by all means go ahead and do that but I'm happy with how that's coming along so we'll check back in soon all right it's been two hours since we last checked in so we're about nine hours in total into this cook I reckon this brisket will be pretty close to being ready so let's have another probe around and a temperature check got 196 in the thickest part of the point 199, started probe quite nice, still with a little bit to go. 198, it's quite soft there. Very soft there. 201, we're almost at the end of our snake. It's burning hottest a bit back here, so I reckon that's got another hour's burn time. I don't reckon our brisket will be far off, maybe another half an hour to 45 minutes, so we'll check back in then. All right, it's been an hour and a half since we last checked in. I did check it after about 45 minutes and it wasn't quite there, but this is feeling nice and soft now. We're up around the 203 sort of range. It's just probing like butter. And as you can see, our snake's pretty much at the end. So that's a pretty good 10 and a half hour burn time. So I've just put some high heat gloves on and we are carefully going to lift this brisket out. All right, so when you get your brisket out, I always like to just let it steam off for five minutes just to stop that cooking process so you don't overcook it. And when it comes to resting, you've got a few options based on when you want to serve your brisket. If it's ready four or five hours in advance, it's always a good idea to rest it in an esky. They hold the heat really well and they'll keep the brisket hot at a really good eating temperature until you're ready to serve it. Or you can hold a brisket in the oven at about that 70 degrees Celsius or 160-ish Fahrenheit. And I've done that for about 24 hours until I've been ready to serve it the next day. But today I'm just going to let it rest at room temperature for an hour because I want to serve it in an hour and then I'll slice and serve it so we'll come back when we're ready to do that. All right I'm just about ready to slice this brisket but I don't want to waste those juices in the foil so I'm going to put it in this container and then we'll get into slicing this brisket. So I'll make a little lip in the foil and I'll carefully pick it up. Put the lid on and we can save that for a future cook. All right so I'll slice it straight down the middle. All 
right, so that's the end piece of our flat. As you can see, juicy all the way through. Still pulls apart with ease. That is a great brisket. All right, so slicing the flat is pretty straightforward, but as you get into the point, we've got the flat muscle more on this side. So what I like to do is on this side, where you've got that big point muscle, is we can start taking slices off this way. And that's where you start getting them beautiful fatty point slices from, which are my personal favorite. And once you've only got that little bit of point muscle left, I like to just trim it off like so, dice those pieces up, and then turn it back to the way you were slicing the flat, and continue slicing like so, and you get these beautiful little slices of flat. But either these little cubes of point, or the point end slices would have to be my favorite. So let's have a taste. All right, time for a taste. I'm gonna go for one of these little point cubes. Oh man, that is incredible. Try a bit of this beautiful little flat. So tender, so juicy. That is up there with one of the best briskets I've had. Such amazing bark, incredible taste, texture, so juicy, everything you want in a brisket. And I can't recommend boating your brisket enough. I absolutely love that method. It would have to be my favorite out of wrapping in foil, wrapping in butcher's paper or anything else. I've had the best results every time I do it. And as you can see, this brisket turned out amazing. Well, if you enjoyed the video, everyone, and you learned something from it, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our future videos. But for now, that's the end of this video. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.